Well, friends, at least the Supreme Court seems to be picking up the pace. And maybe, just maybe, Donald Trump will soon be headed to trial in his criminal prosecution in Washington, D.C., for trying to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. Let's talk about that, because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. Well friends, if nothing else, at least the Supreme Court seems to be stepping up the pace a bit. On Monday, Donald Trump filed a request urging the Supreme Court to stop his DC federal trial dead in its tracks. Keep a pause or a stay in place so his prosecution for trying to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election does not move forward, does not move in the direction of trial. That was on Monday. One day later, on Tuesday, the Supreme Court ordered special counsel Jack Smith to respond to Trump's request to keep the pause or the stay in place. Let's start with the new reporting. This from Politico. Headline, Chief Justice gives Jack Smith one week to respond to Trump's bid to stave off trial. And that article begins, Chief Justice John Roberts is giving prosecutors a week to respond to former President Donald Trump's request to keep his federal criminal election subversion trial on hold while he tries to persuade the Supreme Court to scuttle it entirely on the grounds of presidential immunity. A brief docket entry from the court Tuesday morning said special counsel Jack Smith has until Tuesday at 4 p.m. to address the emergency application Trump's lawyers filed at the high court Monday. Last week, a three-judge panel of a federal appeals court in Washington unanimously rejected Trump's sweeping immunity claim. However, the judges agreed not to return the case to a lower court for trial until the Supreme Court acts on Trump's request for emergency relief. Now friends, what I wanna do is go back to Monday and take a quick look at the brief Donald Trump and his lawyers filed in the Supreme Court. And I wanna quote just a little bit of it, primarily from page one, because even on page one there is so much to dislike. There's so much that's inappropriate and ultimately, what Donald Trump tries to do is he tries to deceive the reader. Here is how Donald Trump's brief in the Supreme Court of the United States opens. This application is deja vu all over again. Quoting the renowned legal scholar Yogi Berra. Okay, Yogi Berra was a lot of things renowned legal scholar was not one of them. But friends, before I move on, you know, before I joined the Department of Justice, I was an Army JAG on active duty. Uh, I was a prosecutor handling court martial cases, and then I became a government appellate attorney so that when soldiers were convicted at court martial and they appealed their conviction, um, I would handle the appeal on the government side, kind of like being a prosecutor in the appellate court. And a case would work its way through the military appellate system. And then there was a direct line of appeal or attempted appeal right up to the United States Supreme Court. So I had the opportunity, in fact, the, the pleasure, the honor of authoring briefs opposing a soldier's request to have the Supreme Court take up their case. And I pulled one out of a box in my garage. This is from about 32 years ago, one of the briefs I authored. And you know what I never put in a single brief or pleading or filing that was destined for the Supreme Court? I never put a joke in it. Not on page one, not on the final page, not anywhere in between. I tried to stick to the facts and the law 
And it's hard for me to describe just how wrong it is for any lawyer to decide that it's appropriate to open with a joke. Like this is deja vu all over again, quoting Yogi Berra. But let's move on to Donald Trump's attempt to deceive in the brief he and his lawyers filed with the Supreme Court. Now, at the special counsel's urging, a panel of the D.C. Circuit has, in an extraordinarily fast manner, issued a decision on President Trump's claim of immunity and ordered the mandate returned to the district court to proceed with President Trump's criminal trial in four business days, unless this court intervenes as it should. President Trump's claim that presidents have absolute immunity from criminal prosecution for their official acts presents a novel, complex, and momentous question that warrants careful consideration on appeal. The panel opinion below, like the district court, concludes that presidential immunity from prosecution for official acts does not exist at all. This is a stunning breach of precedent and historical norms. Friends, did you see the attempt to deceive in there? Did you see the outright disinformation? There it is. Donald Trump and his lawyers claim that when all of the judges in the trial court and the appellate court ruled that a president does not have absolute immunity against being prosecuted for the crimes he committed while in office, Donald Trump and his lawyers assert, quote, this is a stunning breach of precedent and historical norms. Now, friends, some of Donald Trump's supporters, some of the MAGA crew might read that, might see it, might hear about it. Just bear with me. Assume they see it or they read it or they hear about it. And what will they conclude? Oh my gosh, this is a stunning breach of precedent. This is a stunning breach of historical norms saying that a president can be prosecuted for his crimes. The problem is the exact opposite is true. There is no precedent. There is absolutely no case, no appellate court opinion, no Supreme Court ruling, no precedent saying a president can't be prosecuted for, convicted of crimes he commits while in office. You know why there's no precedent? Because the Constitution provides a president can be prosecuted. Not only can a president be prosecuted, they can even be prosecuted after they have been impeached for the exact same conduct, the exact same crime. That is the impeachment judgment clause, even after uh, articles of impeachment are passed by the House of Representatives, even after a Senate trial on those articles of impeachment result in a president's conviction by the Senate, the president is still susceptible to indictment, trial, judgment, punishment. In other words, prosecution. The reason there's no precedent saying a president can't be prosecuted is because the Constitution provides that a president can be prosecuted. Let's take on historical norms. Donald Trump and his attorneys say it is also a stunning breach of historical norms. Let's go back to 1974. Quick history lesson. Richard Nixon committed crimes while in office and he resigned. When Gerald Ford became president, what did he do? He pardoned Richard Nixon expressly so Richard Nixon couldn't be prosecuted for his crimes. There is something of an historical norm. If presidents were immune from prosecution all along, Gerald Ford would not have had to pardon 
Richard Nixon, but expressly in the pardon. He said he is being pardoned so he can't be prosecuted for any crimes he committed while in office. So when Donald Trump and his lawyers announce on page one of a Supreme Court filing that this is a stunning breach of precedent and historical norms, the exact opposite is, is true. That's disinformation. Now, it's not going to fool the Supreme Court justices. It's not going to fool Jack Smith. It's not going to fool me. It's not going to fool you. But it might have the tendency to fool people who are gullible enough to listen to anything Donald Trump claims. So, friends, we will await Jack Smith's reply. The Supreme Court gave him one week to file it. Keep an eye out for that reply to be filed in even less time, maybe two, three, four days down the road. And I think you can rest assured Jack Smith will say this case should not be stayed, should not be paused, should not be stopped. Instead, it should be returned to Judge Tanya Chutkin's capable hands so a trial date can be set and the case can move in the direction of a trial. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.